The Constitution of the Year 8 French, Constitution de l'an 8 or French, Constitution du 22 Frimaire and 8 was a national constitution of France, adopted on December 24, 1799 during the Year 8 of the French Revolutionary Calendar, which established the form of government known as the Consulate. The coup of 18 Brumaire November 9, 1799 had effectively given all power to Napoleon Bonaparte, and in the eyes of some, ended the French Revolution. After the coup, Napoleon and his allies legitimized his position by crafting the short and obscure constitution of the year 8, as Malcolm Crook has called it. The constitution Taylor made the position of first consul to give Napoleon most of the powers of a dictator. It was the first constitution since the 1789 revolution without a declaration of rights. The document vested executive power in three consuls, but all actual power was held by the first consul, Bonaparte. This differed from Robespierre's Republic of C.1792 to 1795, which was more radical, and from the oligarchic Liberal Republic of the Directory, 1795 to 1799, but resembled the autocratic Roman Republic of Caesar Augustus, a conservative republic in name, which reminded the French of stability, order, and peace. To emphasize this, the authors of the constitutional document used classical Roman terms, such as consul, senator, and tribune. The constitution of year 8 established a legislature of three houses, which was composed of a conservative senate of 80 men over the age of 40, a tribunate of 100 men and a legislative body of 300 men. The constitution also used the term notables. The word Notables had been in common usage under the monarchy, every Frenchman understood it, and it was comforting. It referred to prominent, distinguished men landholders, merchants, scholars, professionals, clergymen, and officials. The people in each district chose a slate of notables by popular vote. The first consul, the tribunate, and the corps legislatif each nominated one senatorial candidate to the rest of the Senate, which chose one candidate from among the three. Once all of its members were picked, it would then appoint the tribunate, the corps legislatif, the judges of cassation, and the commissioners of accounts from the slate of notables. Napoleon held a plebiscite on the Constitution on 7 February 1800. The vote was not binding, but it allowed Napoleon to maintain a veneer of democracy. Lucien Bonaparte announced results of 3,011,007 in favor and 1,562 against the new dispensation. The true result was probably around 1.55 million for it, with several thousand against it. This constitution was amended, firstly, by the Constitution of the Year X, which made Napoleon first consul for life. A more extensive alteration, the Constitution of the Year 12, established the Bonaparte dynasty with Napoleon as a hereditary emperor. The first, brief Bourbon Restoration of 1814 abolished the Napoleonic constitutional system, but the Emperor revived it and at once virtually replaced it with the so-called Additional Act of April 1815, promulgated on his return to power. The return of Louis XVIII in July 1815 following the Hundred Days saw the definitive abolition of Napoleon's constitutional arrangements. The Napoleonic constitutions were completely replaced by the Bourbon Charter of 1814. Sources Connolly, Owen 2000. The French Revolution and Napoleonic Era, 3rd edition. Fort Worth, Texas, Harcourt. pp. 201–203.